One of the things that I love about looking at documents through freedom of information or access to information is that you get to look behind the curtain of a process that most people never see. Most people, when they go to a concert or when they go see a speaker, they just see what happens on stage. They don't realize how many hundreds and hundreds of pages of emails sometimes went on or negotiations behind the scenes to get to that point. And that is the case with Canada's equivalent of a rock star, David Suzuki. And I don't say that in terms of raw talent, I just say that in terms of the number of stipulations and procedures that have to be in place before Dr. Suzuki, the legendary Canadian fruit fly biologist, will appear at your event. Now we know that in the past, Suzuki's appearances have run tens of thousands of dollars. It seems like he has lowered his rate a fair bit in recent years, whether that's because of supply and demand or philanthropy, I don't know. But one event in particular I wanted to highlight here, which was a speech that David Suzuki did at the University of Saskatchewan in September of 2016, called aptly, A Conversation with David Suzuki. Now, university officials were very happy. They had the opportunity to bring in Suzuki, and in fact, the only fee they had to pay was a $2,500 donation to the David Suzuki Foundation, and of course, a couple of other little costs here and there. But the one thing that was interesting was an email that jumped out in the planning process of this. They were specifically trying to get a hold of Suzuki's books to have available for sale. When he gets some money from that, of course, as he should, he wrote the things. But here's an email from one of the officials at the university to the woman who was actually spearheading this event. The university employee named Megan wrote to the event's lead, Sandra Duarte, Hi Sandra, I have spoken with a rep with Heritage Group who distributes Suzuki's books. She spoke of how particular. Suzuki can be with events and forwarded me a document created by Greystone Books that says what to order and how much. So I've gone ahead and placed an order based on that. If Suzuki is unhappy for some reason, she said we can at least fall back on having done what his publisher told us to do. I ordered based on the attendance of 350 people. I've attached a book list for your reference. Please let me know if you have any further questions or concerns. It said later on in that same exchange that Suzuki will not sign old books, so they had to have newer books of his. And the one thing that I find interesting here is that everyone seems to go along with this. No one seems to question it, which was eerily familiar. You may remember a couple of years ago, my friend and colleague Ezra Levant had unveiled documents from access to information from John Abbott College, where Suzuki had appeared for $30,000. And one of the requests that went unchallenged was downright illegal, some might argue, under basic employment and human decency guidelines. We have learned via Dr. Suzuki's assistant that although the doctor does not like to have bodyguards per se, he does not mind having a couple of ladies, females, that would act as bodyguards in order that he may travel from one venue to another without being accosted too many times along the way. Now in that story, it was actually the case that organizers wanted to see these people in advance and even had a dress code for them. They had to be presentable, they had to look nice. This was part of getting Dr. Diva, I mean Dr. David Suzuki to do the event. But here's the thing that I found interesting. It seems like the Suzuki Foundation and Suzuki staff have learned that sometimes documents can be obtained under access to information. So for example, the university's organizer had actually emailed Suzuki's executive assistant about stipulations for which types of media could cover the event. And instead of answering the request by email, Suzuki's assistant said to call her. So to deal with this by phone, so there's no record for people like me that want to look into it. Now look, I don't think it's all that outrageous that David Suzuki is particular, but I think it's one more piece of evidence that this man is oftentimes more about the show than about the substance. And it seems like that was certainly the case at the University of Saskatchewan. For The Rebel.media, I'm Andrew Lawton. Hey, if you like what you see here, make sure to check out the rebel.media for lots more great content and check out premium memberships. Get things you won't see anywhere else only at the rebel.media.